Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel, Cedric here. And even though I am in cold and rainy Antwerp today, we are going to taste a very exotic beer. Uh, actually, this is a Belgian beer that's not even for sale in Belgium. This is the second beer and unfortunately the last beer that my good friend, the broke Belgian, brought to me uh, from Thailand when he was visiting. Um, and this is actually a Belgian classic, but uh, a modern exotic twist on that Belgian classic. We are talking about Hoogarden, in this case Hoogarden Botanic, an Asian series. But let's first talk about the brewery itself and the history of Hoogarden, because that is quite an interesting story, or at least I like that story. Um, actually, Wheat beer, because Hoogarden is a wheat beer, as we say, or a wheat beer, was uh, produced quite heavily in Hoogarden, the township of Hoogarden, in the 17th century already. They had, I believe, in 1800, uh, in the 18th century, in 1708, they had no less than 12 breweries, um, but they unified as one. But already in the 17th century, so the century before that, it was produced quite heavily. Nonetheless, actually, the first written evidence of uh, brewing activities in Hoogarde and actually brewing with wheat specifically, date back to 1318, so five years ago. They celebrated uh, the 700th anniversary of brewing wheat beer in Hoogarde. Um, the story of the Hoogarde brand actually goes back to Pierre Celis. Um, Pierre Celis, we have talked about this man before because he was also the man that developed the recipe for Grottenbier or Grotten Santé, the cave beer by Kaze Matten. Um, he was actually a milkman by trade, but as a teenager he learned the trade of brewing by his uh, next door neighbor, Thomson. Thomson was uh, the last remaining brewery in Hoogarden. And in 1957, Thomson quit brewing. Um, and of course, this was a loss for the Hoogarden community. The people of the township actually wanted the old brewery or a brewery back in the town, but they mainly wanted to bring back the old beer. Of course, having learned this from Thompson himself, uh, Pierre actually did have that recipe. And in 1965, eight years after the, the downfall of Thompson, Pierre starts brewing some test brews in his old hayloft. Um, and then in 1966, he starts a brewery officially with a bit of help from the mayor. Uh, but he founds brewery The Class translated to the vault, which is uh, a slight nod to the old monks that used to be there. And well, he starts this, this uh, brewery and starts brewing out Hoogaard's wheat beer or old Hoogaard's wheat beer. Later rebranded to just Hoogaarden. That was 1966 and um, this really goes off, yeah, spreads like fire. Um, in the 1980s, he bought an old lemonade factory called Hoogardia. Um, very original names in Hoogarde. So he buys the Hoogardia uh, factory and converts it to a brewery. So brewery de Glas expands. It grows a lot. And by 1985, the class brews 75,000 hectoliters of wheat beer per year. Um, also in 1985, they start negotiating export to the US. But unfortunately, also in 1985, um, the brewery burns down to the ground. And unfortunately, um, Pierre doesn't have any money left and also doesn't have uh, adequate insurance so of course he, he had insurance but not enough um, 
this is the time that Stella Artois uh, actually buys the brewery because it would have cost millions and millions, Belgian francs, uh, to rebuild the brewery and Pierre didn't have that kind of money. So Stella Artois from Leuven, not far from Hoogarde, uh, buys the brewery and I believe a few years later uh, Stella Artois also gets bought by Interbrew, which we know today as AB InBev. Um, probably one of the best buys they've ever done uh, in Belgium. Of course, now Pierre does have a lot of money and in 1991, or the late 80s, he moves to Austin, Texas. And in 1991, um, yeah, he can't shake this feeling of missing his brewing days. So he starts a new brewery, Sellis Breweries, and he starts brewing Sellis Whites. Uh, wink, wink, notch, notch. In 2005, so we're making a quite a jump here, but in 2005, AB InBev actually moves the production from uh, Hoogarde to Jupille, where Jupiler is brewed. Uh, Jupiler also part of AB InBev. Now, they changed the recipe as well as moving the brewing activities. They actually uh, fire about half the people that worked in Hoogarde and they changed the recipe to skimp on uh, ingredients. Of course, as to be expected, uh, sales plummeted. The numbers go down all the way and well, people just didn't like it anymore. It, I heard stories that they changed from a nice full mouthfeel and a nice tasty, malty, well, wheaty um, beer to yeah, sparkling water with a flavor. And luckily they um, came to their senses and in 2007 uh, they actually moved everything back to the glass in Hoogarde. Um, they couldn't quite get that quality that they had in Hoogarde. Uh, water treatment wasn't at a technological high as it is today so they just moved it back and luckily things restored. In 2011 unfortunately Pierre Celis passed away um, and the Salis Brewery brand had been sold to Miller at the time. Now, in 2012, his daughter Christine actually regained uh, the rights to the Salis name or the Salis Brewery name. And in 2017, she restarted the, that brewery. So currently they do have good wheat beer in Austin, Texas. Now, in 2018, and now we go back to AB InBev. Uh, AB InBev announced that part of the production is moved to China. Um, not because they didn't want it here anymore, but just because of the high demand in China or in the Asian market for wheat beer. Um, not so long ago, Duvel Mortgat also uh, announced that they bought a brewery in China to produce Vedette White in particular, so again, wheat beer. Uh, so a lot is moving in the Asian market when it comes to wheat beer, hence the Hoogarden Botanic. Currently, AB InBev brews over 1.3 million hectoliters a year, and this is only Hoogarden, and about 90 or even over 90% of that is uh, meant for export to over 70 countries. I believe that only about 6 to 8% of that. Uh, number is staying in the Belgian market. So, wow. Now, originally, the Hoogarden beer is a light, top fermented, unfiltered wheat beer. It's an artisanal product. Um, <coughs> it is unfiltered, unpasteurized, re fermented in a bottle. And uh, it's not just a wheat beer, it is a nice, full wheat beer. Not that high in alcohol, it was about 4.5%, uh, 4.9%. And to add flavor, to make it a bit more exotic, even back then, they added coriander and curacao, so um, orange peel. Traditionally, people often drank this with lemon. 
with a lemon slice in the glass or even with a bit of lemon juice. So actually this botanic lemongrass and citrus zest is not that far-fetched. Um, all through my throughout my childhood I've seen old men uh, often drink a hoogarden with lemon. So not that weird. Uh, we also made a beer cocktail back in the days with uh, two-thirds hoogarden, one-third of Sweet Creek by Lindemans. Um, I'll put a link up here because I have reviewed that beer as well. Um, but this is not that weird at all. Now to talk about this Hoogarden Botanic uh, series, this is actually a series that only came out in Asia. Um, it started with, I believe, Hoogarden Peach, and they have two or three others now as well. Um, but this one in particular, the lemongrass and citrus zest um, was launched in 2021 in Korea and Hong Kong uh, because the Hoogarden peach had such success there. Here in Belgium or in Europe we also have uh, Hoogarden Radler and Hoogarden Lemon um, but those are a bit higher in alcohol. This one in particular is 2.5% ABV which means that this 500 milliliter can is actually the equivalent of one standard beer, one standard Pilsner here. Uh, so if you're out on the town and you're driving, I'd rather have you drink one of these uh, or two of these instead of two regular beers or four regular beers. In 2022, in April, this beer also launched in Thailand and they made a whole uh, event out of that with a botanical garden art installation in Bangkok. It was right next to the Victory Monument and it was dedicated to the Four Senses and they conveniently renamed it the Four S's being Sight, Sense, Sound and Sip. Not coincidentally, this was in April um, because it coincides with is it called Sankrang? I'm not sure. Anywho, the local uh, New Year, because it's of course a Buddhist country. I am very curious about this because, well, as you may have noticed in my video with uh, the Broke Belgian, when we reviewed the Tai Tai by Oedipus, I actually love lemongrass. I love cooking with lemongrass. I love smelling lemongrass. Um, so why not drink lemongrass? So I'm very curious about this. And of course, I took out my trusty old Hoogarden glass. Uh, these are very sturdy glasses. Actually, you can throw with this and it still won't break. These are almost as thick as the original Geuze glasses. The original Hoogarden has a pouring ritual just like Duvel, um, which consists of pouring, leaving one third in the bottle, twisting it around for 16 times, no less, and then pouring everything in to get that nice uh, hazy white beer. But of course this can is, well, is too big for the glass, so I will not be doing that. Hoogarden Botanic is an infusion. This is actually uh, a classic wheat beer, but infused with natural lemongrass plant extracts. Um, again, very curious. Asian brewers and infusions. Oh, smells quite pleasant. Rather sweet, but also very lemony. And actually quite subtle as well. Actually, the smell reminds me of Fanta Lemon. Um, but not the sugar water that we know here in Belgium, but more like the southern, the Spanish variant, where there's actually lemon inside. Okay, very refreshing. Already smells very summery. It is very, very pale. I am already gonna twirl this around a bit because it's not only pale, but also very clear. OK. 
Okay. There we go. Not much has changed. I don't think that there's a lot of yeast in this can. It's a bit hazy, uh, but it's still very, very, very pale. This is extremely pale, actually. Nice white foam, quite dense foam, tiny bubbles. I do see a lot of purling in the glass, so quite carbonated as well. Um, yeah, very pale yellow. This actually does remind me of lemon juice uh, or a watered down version of Fanta lemon. Still a quite thin smell, but very citrusy, very lemony, quite sweet as well. Very refreshing, again, very summery. I'd say tropical, but yeah, it's mainly citrusy actually. But it does have that, how should I say this, that Asian Thai, um, cuisine in the background so that's where the difference is located between lemon and lemon grass that subtle change a slightly vegetal components actually oh that is very light It is almost a bit watery, uh, but this time I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, it's actually quite pleasant. It is very refreshing. It is very uh, fresh in itself. Now I'm drinking this rather cold, but that doesn't seem to be a problem. It is in fact, Not as sweet as it smells, but also not as sour as it smells. So that's, of course, on the plus side of lemongrass. It is very citrusy, but it's not sour like lemon. Um, also close to no acidity in this taste. Um, I should have known that. I don't know why I don't expect, uh, didn't expect that. But yeah, very pleasant. And I do think that on a summery terrace, um, this is an awesome beer, also for designated drivers. If you're gonna have two or one or two, yeah, make it these. Uh, they'll last longer, there's more in the can. But it is quite a pleasant tasting. Also in the aftertaste, that um, vegetal component is not dominant, it is present though. And for once it is, actually not disturbing normally I don't really like that uh, strong vegetal component but here it's it's actually adding to the taste uh, instead of dominating the taste so again quite uh, I'm not gonna say very balanced um, but it is quite nice better than I expected Also, I do like the can, uh, quite subtle, but I do like the color, I do like the plant and the citrus uh, peel that's added here. And if you see the, the marketing photos and the, uh, the announcement event, uh, they absolutely gambled on um, yeah, people wanting to be seen. Um, the influencer lifestyle they uh, actually invited a lot of influencers and a lot of uh, instagram and youtube uh, famous people and yeah they marketed it themselves uh, <coughs> genius actually okay another pleasant surprise from thailand um how should I score this beer? Again, won't be my favorite, uh, but it is quite a nice beer. So let's call this a, a tree. 
yeah, very, very average. Um, I'm very glad that I tasted it. So thanks again, Farmer the Broke Belgian. Uh, go check out his channel as well for his adventures. Um, you won't find much beer on there, but you will find beautiful uh, images and underwater scenery because he's a diver. Nonetheless, um, yeah, as usual, if you like this video, let me know, hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell icon. You'll be the first to know whenever I upload something, which usually <laughs> is Wednesday, Friday and Sunday at 6 p.m. local time here. But this week something went wrong with the uploading, so... <laughs> Anywho, I'm going to leave it at that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers, you guys.